to gain scout. So presumably that will give us another scout. It's gonna be Memphis. Of course we can rename the cities, I'm sure. Uh, rename right over there. Normally I would name cities and things after subscribers and whatnot. However, uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna keep the original names for this run to see what, what they are, get the vibe, and that sort of thing. How do the families work? That's a great question. Life until love. If someone in the chat can answer that. That would be awesome because I sure as hell don't know yet. So we do have to choose a production here. Uh, the game is suggesting either a warrior or a festival. Um, so these are repeatable jobs, I guess. Um, it, on completion, we'd get 20 growth, and we would lower discontent by 20. Discontent's actually going up by one. Why? Oh, because of our difficulty. Looks like we just get one flat discontent uh, per year, just on the basis of our difficulty. And looks like you can up to 100 discontent is level one, and then I guess it goes to the next level. Okay. Um, we can just boost the treasury, we can do the council. It feels like we should build something. Uh, we actually might want a, uh, a worker over here. Um, we got a scout. Yeah, it said it would build it in Waset, but it actually dropped the scout next to Memphis. So I think that's just a, a tooltip issue. It's actually better for the scout to be here. I'm happier that it's here. But it did say it would it would build it there. Um, I feel like a, a builder's a good idea. A worker. I don't know. Whatever. I'm doing that. And then we still have our worker over here who has completed the farm. Um, the worker, the suggestion is to build another farm here, which I kind of like. And what I think I might do after I build the second farm is build a granary up here. Because the granary um, gives a bonus to adjacent farms. So, like, if we look here, adjacent farms plus 50%. So if we build a farm here, here, I don't know if we can build a farm there because it's on a hill, although it is lush. Farms have to be built on... Yeah, as long as it's lush, it can be built. So we could build four farms at least, and then a granary in the middle. Is that something we want? I don't know! <laughs> I don't know what the game balance and requirements are yet. But it seems like a good play. It's amazing the amount of stuff that you just, like, start taking for granted after you've played a game for a while. You just, you, you sort of got to the point where you kind of intuitively know, like, what the, what the correct things to focus on are. All right, we've got some more barbs over there. <gasps> ah, we met our first tribe! The Danes! I know we got some Danes in the chat. Uh, maybe we just ran into Aarhus. Cool man, we're coming to visit you. The court is divided over the recent discovery of the Danes. Our scholars wish to study the Danes' culture to deepen understanding, but our generals insist that these savages deserve no such respect. We must bring the court together with our decision. So we've contacted the tribe. We can observe their ways and tradition. Qu the queen, we would become intelligent. <gasps> it looks like that just changes how she would work as a governor. And yeah, if there's clarification about that at some point, I don't know. Or we could devise ways to destroy them. We would become a tactician. We'd no longer be a builder. So what are the implications of the archetype? So if we have the builder archetype, which is what we've got now. Yeah, archetype, builder. So I honestly, I didn't realize the archetype actually had a in-game thing. I thought that was a description of how the AI would play them. Because that's often the way it is. So because we are a builder currently, we can apparently build urban tiles... Um, multiple workers can build improvements. Presumably we can have multiple workers work on the same improvement, like a wonder to do it faster. Um, and all cities have a reduced training time for workers. Oh, can serve as a governor or a chancellor. Could I have appointed myself as a governor? Could I be a leader and a governor? Huh. Anyway, if we took this, we would replace it with tactician. Um, does this give all our units plus one vision? That's actually really strong early on. Oh yeah, it describes it over here. Plus one, plus one range, like vision range. No extra unit consumption cost when outside borders. All units get a 10% critical chance. Can serve as a general or spy master. Bo it boosts our courage and wisdom. Can you build urban tiles to build cities on? That's interesting, I don't know. And yeah, all units get plus one vision. I I really, I'm going to take this. I feel like this is really nice early on. And I don't know the advantage of building urban tiles yet, so. Um, the Danes. The Great Danes. They're just, they're just, you know, what I like about grains is they're so, they're so great. And really, they're really friendly. They're just like big dogs. Yeah, th that was a long walk for a pretty bad joke. My apologies there. Oh, there's more Danes over here. <gasps> Goody Hut. 
All right. And just end year. The Pyrenees over there. Sure. I do like the uh, the names on the map. That was like the best part of um, the the most recent Civ Six expansion, Gathering Storm, when they finally added like names on maps. It's just it's just so important. Like I don't know. Like you you need to have that. Just adds so much flavor to the world. And yeah, this is the the best freaking Mordanes. So this is not an actual empire. These are tribes. So these are they're they're not barbarians. But they're not another sort of player nation. They're this weird in-betweeny kind of thing, which I think is really important for adding flavor. I mean, they're, maybe they're a little more like city-states, but not really, because apparently you can have more of them. Mm -hmm. To kill the barbarians. Well, that's certainly the plan. Hold on. Yeah, it's time to, to start moving over here. Okay. Add general. Available candidate. So I can have myself, my husband, or a scientist. So if I were to lead the warriors... I would give them plus one movement. They would get 6% combat strength, 6% critical chance to deal double damage. I would gain XP while fighting. Ooh. There's my husband as well, who's got Courage 2, Wisdom 2, same as me, um, but have would have Herbalism, which would let him heal faster. And, ooh, it would give him an opinion boost. Oh, it's like giving someone a freaking title in Crusader Kings or something. There's also the Scientist. Now, so... <laughs> I like this because the scientist, um, oh, okay, it doesn't lock in until I click choose. Good. I'm like, hold on, how do I work with this? Um, still does, like, crazy critical damage and get XP, but will no longer tutor the royal family. I want her to tutor my daughter. Ah, uh, you know what? Of course I will personally lead combat. Why wouldn't I do anything else? <gasps> Is that me on the horse? I mean, I, I assume this represents there's a general here. Okay, that's really cool. Oh, I think that also ended the turn. So it looks like promoting and assigning a general both put the unit on cooldown. Fair enough. They're pretty big deal moves. Um, yes, tutorial ambition. So I did get as far as to see what the, the ambition system is. <clears throat> you have unlocked the ability to choose an ambition. Ambitions are goals that your families would like you to pursue, and completing them will grant you and all of your descendants a permanent boost to orders. Completing an ambition immediately unlocks another, and completing ten will win you the game. So always do your best to fulfill your current ambitions. Here are a couple of simple ambitions to get you started. Love it. So, uh, our first choice is either control four cities or kill five enemy units. We're going to kill one enemy unit here. We already control two cities. I'm going to go with control four cities. It seems like, like, because otherwise we have to, we depend, have to depend a bit on luck that there's going to be enough enemies around that can be conveniently killed. Whereas just plopping down four cities seems like a pretty easy thing to do. We do, we can kill the Danes. You're right. But we can also kill them and then put our cities there and then we'd also control four cities. So I'm going to do this. You're right, assuming barbarians count. But I assume they probably would. I mean, they're enemies. Let's pop a goodie hut. <gasps> I'm now known as the Explorer. Oh, God, this art is so good. This village has only recently been sacked, and we discovered a band of survivors huddled in the ruins. These destitute refugees seem eager to abandon the wreckage of their old lives and join our nation. But they are strangers to our culture. What will you do with them? And I think someone in the chat, I don't know if it was Soren or someone else, said there's like a thousand um, events or something in the game right now. That's a huge variety of events. And what's nice about it is this is one of those things where it's really easy for developers to keep adding content. Like, just generating more and more and more events, like, doesn't require a new user interface or anything like that, but is a way to, uh, to um, make sure that the game is, still continues to feel fresh as you go forward and things like that. It's a really good system to sort of build around. Um, and... Uh, Again, I think of Civ 4. Civ 4 had events, and they were really cool, right? If I'm, unless I'm remembering correctly, I don't think it was mods or anything like that. I think Civ 4 just had events that would pop up. Um, so, we can invite them to resettle our nation. It would give us 30 uh, military training points, and we'd get a worker. Or we could recruit them as hardened explorers. Uh, we'd get three extra orders for this turn. Um, I mean, presumably just this turn. And we gain a scout. So, do we want to, basically, do we want a worker or a scout? We have two scouts. I think a worker's is 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 the way we want to go. Uh, although you are far from home. Well, no, I could send you over to Memphis. That's going to be okay. As I was walking in Memphis. All right, head over in that direction. Um, and the scoot will keep scooting the boot. Come over here on this hill for vision. Whiskey and chocolate from Reptile. Hey, Reptile. 
Happy belated birthday. Well, thank you very much. And here's a whiskey and chocolate contribution from your new day neighbor since I am one. <laughs> I'll try real hard um, to murder all you in the nicest way possible. I mean, murder, I mean, you know, um, aggressively invite you to join my empire or something, maybe. I actually don't know how to interact with uh, what kind of interactions the tribes are possible yet. Very curious. Oh, we met another tribe. Again, not another player empire type person, but a tribe, the Thracians. Okay. The, uh, the sort of, I don't know if it's a tattoo or just a marking or things like that, looks really cool. I, I'm stealing this picture for a D&D &D character. Soren, I hope you're okay with it. I'm totally yoinking this for some sort of future D&D &D character. Uh, no quarrels with us. Uh, we don't wish to troll, so we'll, we'll have a truce or prepare for war. We gain legitimacy and go to war. But no, 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 let's, uh, let's just be chill right now. And then we'll scoot down here. Dun, dun, dun. You mean subjugate. Is that a volcano to the west? Oh! That is a volcano. God damn, the art in this game is so good. Why is Civ 6's terrain so boring and lackluster? I mean, it's still better than Beyond Earth, which was just like, here is purple! Okay, I can't tell what anything is. But here is purple! Oh, yeah, it's really not a helpful map at all. This is, this is so good and clear. Everything pops and has so much life. Your cognomen has changed to the explorer. Is that just like my name, my nickname, cognomen? Like, changed to the explorer. Your cognomen describes your recent accomplishments and proving it increases your legitimacy in the eyes of your people. Higher legitimacy grants, grants you additional orders. Also, um, it stops Voldemort from being able to read your mind. Oh, that's something else. Oh no, I'm thinking, it was Occlumency that let them block that, but like, there's a Legend Lamens or something like that, it sounds very similar, that's some sort of magical thing in the Harry Potter universe. Does anyone remember it? I don't remember. Um, forcibly Befriend, was that that, that one? Legitimency? Legilimency, the art of reading the mind. That's what it is. It's Legimency is opposed by Occlumency, right? Okay, that's where I am. Okay. Uh, high legitimacy, gets the additional orders, improves your standing with your nation's family, keeping a legitimacy eye is important for controlling a larger empire. I'll show them who's legitimate! Alright. He said with excessive aggression. Um, so that's it for that. Can you interact with him? Uh, Barbarian Peace with Declare War on... Is his name Swain the Dane? <laughs> I do have to say that, um, so even with the UI scaling set to the max, um, this could probably stand to be embiggened a little bit more. Um, because, I mean... If you're trying to watch this on anything that's not a maximized screen window, if your window is not full screen, this is going to be really hard to read uh, as a like as a stream sort of content thing. But even for myself, I have to do sort of. Oh, okay. I mean, yeah, I have old man eyes now at this point, but it could still stand. the The UI scaling needs to be adjusted slightly. But again, this is a pre early access build. Early access is in three days, so. This is still very early in development. I think on the, the title screen it says it's version 0.1.7 or some damn thing like that. So uh, there's there's a lot of like implication of, listen, chill out, more stuff is coming. And I mean, this is about the slickest early access game I've ever seen. Honestly, this is a release quality game for your average the company. Let's be honest here. Um, <gasps> we finally met someone else. King Ashurbanipal. Uh, other nations are your primary opponents in the old world. However, successfully engaging them diplomatically can lead to gaining a powerful trade partner and ally. We'll be up to you to decide which nations are worthy of being your allies and which should simply be conquered. So I'll do my best to make some friends. Will I, though? So uh, I've been assured that there's some people living over here. I actually don't know how we met them. That's probably right over here. Yeah, there's an Assyrian scout right over there. Okay, he's scooting a boot. Um, choose research. Unlock quarry. Okay, this would allow us to unlock garrisons, and if we build a garrison, I think we can deploy a governor. It's actually the recommended one, too. That's interesting. We could research rhetoric. There's the phalanx over here. Now, so are those all things... Yeah, sovereignty and this and this and this. Okay. I think I'm going to go sovereignty. Unlocks a couple more laws. Oh, speaking of... Oh, no, we don't have enough to unlock a law yet. We need 400 hammers. Or gavels. Um, yeah, let's do this, and we'll see what we can do with the garrison. Let's see what we can do with the garrison. Okay. Uh, let's... Okay, we're going to move you towards the Sorghum Farm. 
Although we might we might send you somewhere else instead. Um, let's keep going this way. We'll see if we can see any more Assyrian stuff. Oh, there we go. Nivene. Uh, this looks pretty dead endy, but I guess I'll come down here anyway. <gasps> Fishies! And they jump around. Hey! Oh my god! Good little flapping animation. Oh, and seagulls there. Of course, that makes perfect sense. Like it. Love it. All right, come over here and kick some barbarian booty. We've been staring at them for far too long. Charge! Okay, so we have a 5.2 strength versus their 4.3. It looks like we are going to get the 25% uh, bonus from our garrison production er, um, promotion since we're fighting in urban terrain. Um, so it looks like the prediction is that we are not going to lose any hit points in the attack. Um, I've only done it like, like two combat actions in my test game. I'm not sure that the attacker ever takes damage. I think it might be like a one-time attack. Where you compare both and then you do some amount of damage. I'm not sure, but we're gonna we're gonna find out a little bit here. Uh, but yeah, it looks like we're gonna bring them down about 40%, um, potentially more if we crit. So let's do that. He lost eight HP. Okay, we can not attack again because I think attacking is a cooldown. Um, so yeah, you are. I don't think you can you can do double attacks no matter your orders and and whatever, which I think is actually critical. If you could have one person just like YOLO like attack attack attack, especially if it's one sided, that would be terrible. All right, work is completed over here. Now, we are going... This is going to reveal a city location, so I, I would say we should start another settler. Especially if we want to finish this. And you can see our growth. Um, unless we want to wait. In two years, our city will grow. Now, what do our citizens, pro citizens produce for us? So each citizen produces some orders, and they cost us money and food. You can use them to create new specialists, but I actually don't know... If just having more people just by itself gives you any extra production. I'm not seeing anything that implies that you would. We could train a farmer. But I'm wondering if if the next growth and having an extra citizen doesn't directly affect our, our production. I might want to do settler and then do a farmer. Yeah, they do nothing on their own other than orders. Okay, which is totally fine. We need to know how they work. Um, so, because uh, if this were, if the, so if this were um, most 4X games, right, including Civilization, what I would do here is probably, um, since building a settler seems to set our growth to zero, I'd probably spend two years doing blah until we got the extra pop, and then go to building a settler or something like that. Um, but since that doesn't work that way, this game, I think it's totally fine for us to just go ahead with the settler, which is going to be done in five years, which is going to be great timing, I think, for settling this barbarian encampment. Um, and then I'll probably queue up the farmer, which will give us more food per year, as well as more growth per year. And science? Rural specialist. Someone was saying I can shift click this or something? No, I don't know. What is the rural specialist thing? Why are we getting scientists, science from farmers? I ain't complaining. I want to know what it is so that I can do it some more. Is it me? No. Is it my nation? Yeah, I tried to middle click it. Um, but it didn't it, it did not go. I mean I can middle click this, and if I middle click that, nothing. Click it, someone says shift click. I'm not getting anything more over here. A default specialist in a rural road? Maybe. Maybe it's an Egyptian thing. Can we find out about that? Um how do we find out about leader of Egypt? Whoa! Huh. Ooh. What? Email address? Oh, probably for, like, playing my emails and stuff. Hold on a sec. Hmm. Egypt. We start with some rocks. We get 50% more from farms, rivers... Farms on rivers, quarries on rivers. Uh-huh. Starting text. Laws. Yeah, I'm not seeing it. Oh, Soren. I'm looking for why... Our farmer gives us plus one science per year. It says rural specialist, but I can't middle click on this. I don't know what if rural specialist is from something that I have, because this is super something that I would like to do forever in, in the future. Oh, the family. Oh. Oh. 
Our family does make it so that rural specialists train in half the time. All rural special, just, okay, so it's not something special that I have going on. It's just fixed that all rural specialists give science per year. Okay. That's what I want to figure it out, because it's like, if this is something that was special because of a thing, I want to know what that is so that I can make sure I've got that special thing going on. Uh, but if it's just built in, that's fine. What do, what do urban specialists give you? Presumably they do, you know, whatever's on their square plus a ting of some kind. Oh, they give more, oh, they rank up. Apprentice, Master, Elder. Oh. Oh, you're already done. Um, scoot. I'm going to get you to scoot over uh, here, I guess. Yeah. Um, although, I think some people were saying that, you know, some of this isn't necessarily done either. Specialists. Um, farmer. Okay. Fisher. Okay. So, they give that. And then for the... The positions, so if you build a, like a priest, it does science, and then, okay. All right, so the, some of those things are just built in. Okay. So I guess it makes sense, because in normal, for, of a lot of 4X games, your citizens passively give you, you know, one science per turn, or or if you're talking about, like, a Master of Orion, they can be assigned a scientist or something like that. So this is still a way that, like, bigger population equals more science. It just so happens you actually have to, like, develop them as a specialist, as opposed to just being a generic citizen which I'm fine with. So the suggestion here is to build a farm, but again, I'm wondering, because I can keep building farms over here, I'm still thinking we're going to plop a granary on top of